It's the Weekly Wrap with your host, broadcasting legend Bruce Wolf, and his trusty sidekick, comedian Tim Slagle. And now, without further ado, Bruce Wolf. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the Weekly Wrap. And now it's my uh, favorite part of the show, wherein I guess what's in Tim's background. And I'm going to guess, Tim, that uh, you've got a, a picture of Joe Biden at a cabinet meeting, and he's got a note card in front of him that says, My name is Joe Biden, just to remind him. <laughs> uh, for the cab- am I right about that, Tim? A cabinet meeting? No, that's not exactly. where Joe. That's not where Joe is. I'm on he the- is at Omaha. Is that Omaha Beach? It's the beaches, right. the beaches of Normandy, where a lot yeah. of young men risked everything so that I could live an idyllic childhood that lasted well into my forties. Mine still going on. <laughs> Uh, you know, it, it, it does, you know, and we're recording this on the uh, 80th anniversary of D-Day and, you know, I've seen, you know, a million tweets about it and it's just, you know, anytime you want to feel like worthless, <laughs> you got something to complain about, <laughs> something to, com- anything to complain about. Yeah. What, what are those women doing ahead of me on the golf course? <laughs> Morose memories with Tim Slagle. Okay. Uh, yeah. What? Can can we hit through these women on the golf course for crying out loud? It's uh, I don't know if you you yeah, saw no. it's it looked like uh, it looked like uh, Joe Biden crapped his pants in front of the world again. Well, and you know what I you know me I'm a, a fool for the for these memes for these things on Twitter. You know how many times I've fallen for this stuff. I think but the best one was when I fell for um uh, I want to say Kyle Farns Kyle Rittenhouse. It looked just like the big boy with the hair mm-hmm. <laughs> and, 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 and the stomach and everything like that. And you said slingshot in the back pocket. Yeah, Bruce <laughs> and, and the checked pants. That should have <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, definitely that, the checked pants. That's Photoshop. So actually, and I wasn't the only one who fell for the one where he's standing there uh, with Macron and uh, they're about to introduce Lloyd Austin and or are in the process of that. And he's seemingly is sitting down on nothing. I thought he was like pulling like a Buster Keaton act where he was going to mime sitting down. Uh, and and then Jill, you know, covers uh, her, her mouth with her hand, maybe says something to him. I and think it, she it was holding like her. He, I think he was, she was holding her nose. That's, <laughs> that's, yeah, it that's looked, the obvious. Like, it like, oh, my like, gosh, Joe, what have you been but eating? Then, and Judge Janine Jean, or whatever her name is, uh, she fell for it. A lot of people fell for it because we want to, of course. It turned out, I mean, it was edited down and he actually does have somewhere to sit. And he's like two seconds after that, he does sit down. I mean, otherwise, it's the best one yet. It's better than all the trips up the stairs and all that. (laughs) So um, hold on. I got to grab this. Hold on. Hold on. Can I just go? But enough of that story. Uh, Let's go on to some. Well, there there's some genuine documentation of uh, Biden's senescence. Uh, there was a Wall Street Journal story. They researched this for a number of months, H- had like about 45 sources on it. Of course, everybody's skittering now and uh, claiming that, uh, <laughs> oh, especially the Democrats who were sure they don't even want to be on deep background on this. <laughs> and there's a lot of Republicans. But I mean, you get from that story. That I mean, Biden is sitting there with note cards that say things like, "We should, we should subsidize Ukraine," and and that's at a meeting. And the thing is, is that uh, <laughs> that's not the subject of the meeting. They were all agreed on that there was going to be some specific <laughs> strategy. Um, oh, wait, that was that was last week's note card. Huh? Yeah, Where's, the, where's right. today's? <laughs> right. And you know, he mumbles and he falls asleep. I, at one point, I forget if it's in the uh, Time Magazine article or uh, in the Wall Street Journal article. And by the way, I mean, you know, everybody's claiming, oh, it's the Rupert Murdoch's Wall Street Journal. But everybody knows the the news section's liberal. The, one of the writers of this was a Democratic press secretary and was at the Washington Post. Um, the new editor of the Washington Post is coming from the Wall Street Journal, so they're not exactly going to turn it into, a, a, you know, a conservative bastion. But anyway, uh, uh, it's amazing you know, it, to me it, that after after screaming about it for the past four years, that the Democrats have completely forgotten about the Twenty Fifth Amendment. 
Oh, well, to totally, totally. So, uh, but at one point, Biden made a mistake and he said that Russia had been decimated in the war with Ukraine. And no, that's yeah. not exactly what's been happening. Although then somebody, and I heard John Podhoritz on the commentary podcast bring this up. Somebody had said, well, the technical de 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 uh, definition of de decimation is losing one tenth, you know, DEC. Sure. De so, yeah, one tenth. Uh, I mean, that, that, that's how far they're going. Forget about remembering the 25th Amendment. <laughs> Uh, well, I think I think actually what happened there was was he got really confused because because I think it was he said three hundred and fifty thousand Russians died, and I think that's how many died in World War Two. Am I am I correct on that? Well, uh, well, probably I think more that, than I think that, that more than that in Russia. Uh, yeah, I, that might have been our our number that died in World War Two. I'm not really really sure about it. Now watch three hundred three hundred fifty. Watch, watch oh, Tim and me. Like, Tim and that's I. like a that's like a civil war. That's like a civil war statistic. I don't think we lost that many in World War II. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm <laughs> I don't know. Somebody, they, don't, why, they, don't where, put, they don't put that where, stuff up on Twitter. <laughs> where are my note cards? All right. Now, you know, I we're going to actually take time here. U.S. U.S. deaths. In in WW2. This is a technical workshop. I'm making this like Eddie Schwartz. OK. All right. The United States military deaths four hundred sixteen thousand eight hundred. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, okay, I was so, wrong. Oh, I I was right about that. Now the Soviet Union lost like between eight and ten million. Oh wow! Soldiers in World War Two. Yeah, and, uh, and so, didn't and didn't flinch. Twenty four million total. Uh, it's just. I mean, you know, it's my and I never want to diminish, you know, how many we lost in Vietnam, which was like 60,000 or 50,000 plus 10,000 non-military, I think, or how many we lost in Iraq, which was like around 5,000 because, you know, one life is one life. But, yeah, we're living, you know, this era <laughs> where, you know, we don't want to send anybody into and, and we and I don't blame us for not wanting to send anybody into battle. Um, but it's video. It's video. I mean, basically, that's right. it. It's uh, it's uh, a number on the radio or in the newspaper isn't as shocking as uh, uh, graphic footage, which is why Vietnam there was so much opposition to Vietnam because there were pictures. Oh. Well, right, and it's, get those as pictures we all recall, off my TV. The, the Tet Offensive was a military victory that turned into a political defeat because they showed it on TV. We learned our lesson from that by having shock, shock and awe uh, with Colin Powell, and and don't show it to anybody because yeah, nobody could take it. A TV picture of war. You think we would have fought it on D-Day? <laughs> I mean, there there are pictures of the, you know, storming the beach, but uh, it well, was code, exactly... code pink would have been right there saying uh, we got to stop this day. You know, uh, on on June seventh. Imagine yeah. if Saving Private Ryan uh, appears in theaters on June sixth, nineteen forty four. <laughs> no way! Stop it, Ike! <laughs> Don't do that. We'll you know we'll learn to live with Hitler. Um, anyway. So speaking of the aforesaid uh, Washington Post, yeah, I mean, things are really going bad for, for the left uh, these days. The Washington Post lost something like $77 million last year. So they, they're they bringing in some uh, new editors. They've got to sh shake things up. I mean, Jeff Bezos, you know. Well, how much is seventy-seven million to Jeff Bezos? I mean, I mean, really, that's uh, it's a rounding that's error. Yeah, okay, that's pocket sure, change. But, yeah, but but. Anyway, you know when it all started going bad for the Washington Post? I'll tell you, Tim. A certain guy that uh, you're doing this little podcast with uh -huh. was featured on the front page online of the Washington Post several years ago. Because do you remember Freddie Gray? Does that I name do not. ring a bell? I do, I do in not. In Baltimore, the guy who was put in the back of the paddy wagon and he wound up dying and then they wound oh, okay. up charging all the... And it was Freddie Gray. Sure. And... About a, a year after that, the White Sox were in Baltimore. And I just mentioned on Twitter, I said, what? You know, has everybody forgotten about Freddie Gray? And I met, I said the White Sox were in their Freddie Gray road uniforms in Baltimore. Well, this was <laughs> I, I didn't even mean it like to knock sure? the guy or anything. By the way, it should be pointed out as a caveat here that every cop that was charged with this 
got off. There was no nobody was convicted of anything, possibly because they just overcharged all the police officers on this. Maybe they could have gotten some kind of conviction, but they didn't. And I the Washington Post put unemployed sportscaster. And that really hurt because that was true. Uh, unemployed sportscaster, you know, ridicules Fred, Freddie Gray. And I my Twitter thing lit up like it was nobody's business constant. And there were, you know, veiled threats. And and I wound up apologizing in the Tribune, which actually screwed up the apology because they didn't work. <laughs> the guy, the guy who did the story, I asked him to read back a quote for me. And he said, well, I didn't get it all down. Well, thanks. So then I emailed him one so that I could, you, but you got to make sure. Anyway, I even had Dan Proft, my former partner, help me with a little damage control on that, saying, uh, you know, I'm kind of like Jackie Mason. I just try to <laughs> make people laugh at everything. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just a Jew trying to make a, a living here. So anyway, <laughs> they that's what that's how far they had gone. The Washington Post and, you know. I was the canary in the mine shaft. Well, it's, it's like going to Mini- It's like going to Minneapolis and say, in honor of June, they're going to paint the Floyd statue pink. There we go. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's another story. The uh, intersectionality. There's a, there's a collision at that intersection right now between uh, gays and blacks and, and Latinos, which we can explore in the next segment. But anyway, that was a, a little uh, warning to to wapo uh that they they just you know gone off the deep end i mean when they're writing a, about me they actually wrote about me on the front page. i mean that wow it's like woodward and bernstein for crying out loud, <laughs> <laughs> writing about me and um it it was uh, quite a heady days back then just a few years ago bruce wolf tim slagle on the weekly rap <laughs> Prime Minister Netanyahu playing politics with the war. I don't think so. He's trying to work out the serious problem. Thank you. Yeah! Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I think that question was a plant to be. Am I right about that? Because and then he answers that Bibi's just trying to do his job. I, I, I thought I'd heard that because he had put his foot in his mouth. In I believe the Time Magazine interview, where he was asked if BB was just prolonging the war in order to uh, help his uh, maximize his incumbency, and in his garbled answer seemed to indicate that he believed that's exactly what BB was doing. So then he had to <laughs> walk it back and chew gum at the same time, as you saw in that clip there. So <laughs> Cujo's, as Michael Jordan would say to the president of the United States. So, yeah, it's I can't wait for the debate. Uh, when yeah. is that? June 27th. Uh, so 26, 26, June 26. 26th. Yeah. OK. Did it change? Uh, okay. Biden is just straddling that that fence. He never finished. It... <laughs> <laughs> right. So, you know, it's just it, it's it's interesting that he just he just keeps saying these things and getting in trouble for saying these things. And, and uh and then we get in trouble for overstating the case and thinking that he crapped his pants uh, in the Normandy <laughs> celebration. So our bad, our bad there. Um, now, locally, you know, the uh, comedian Michael Rappaport, he's an actor, isn't he? This is Bruce's Jews think, news, by the way. I think Are you familiar with him. Uh, not, not, not so much. Not so much. Not so much. Uh, so you can't give a critique of his stand up. No, uh, but he's a I probably I probably probably should have looked at it before before we did the show. Okay. I knew I mean, we were going to talk never, about this. I've never seen it, but he's a vociferous uh, ally of Israel. And it, I mean, sure, I'm sure you've seen him in many, many roles on TV. He's, he's, he's a pretty famous character actor. Is that what mm -hmm. it would be? But anyway, this Batavia comedy club dropped his show over that's, quote unquote uh, that's, safety concerns. That's the comedy vault. OK. It's uh, it's it's in an old bank, so it's uh they made it the comedy vault. It's a it's a nice room. Well, apparently not safe enough. Uh, so <laughs> well, yeah, I know. That's what I that's what I don't get. It used to be a bank. I mean, they, you don't have to worry about protesters. Yeah. You just you got the the whole clock club is a is a safe room. Isn't isn't Batavia where don't they do they have a nuclear facility or something like that in in Batavia? Or am I mistaking? 
that for some, for another town nearby, some sort of silo. But uh, you know, I was just thinking that they should have enough protection in, yeah. in Batavia. But um, I mean, the and the and the guys playing Batavia. It's not like he's playing the improv on Wells Street or wherever. Uh, can't. Uh, but you've played there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I've been, I've been, at the, I've done, I've done sets at the Comedy Vault. Yes. What, uh, what kind of audience you get? I mean, it's almost that's kind of rural there, isn't it? No, no, uh, no, no. It's a, it's, it's, it's kind of uh, kind of hipster, kind of upscale. Actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. It's uh, they, they've got a really nice downtown area there in Batavia, and it's, it's right there. So it's, I mean, there's restaurants and bars in the area. It's uh, all within walking distance. It's uh. Right on the river. It's a uh, uh, it's a great club. I would I would highly recommend it. But uh, uh, I don't know why they did this. <laughs> now for all the background on, on the neighborhood and everything, here is uh, Tim Slagle. Uh, <laughs> I, I am trying to you know where you know I've only lived in Illinois for about seven decades. Where I I, I know of Batavia, and um, I think Tom North, Skilling no, has talked about the weather there. Uh, it's northwest. But, yeah, like where between what and what? This... Uh, Chicago and Elgin. <laughs> oh, St. Charles. Yeah, I know St. Charles in Geneva. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's north. It's north. It's north of St. Charles, I believe. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I've, I've actually I actually lived you know in that area a couple of years ago, but I never got as far as Batavia. All right. Yeah, it's right around the right in the the beautiful on the Fox beautiful, River. beautiful yeah. scenic Fox River Valley. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm not so uh, foreign. Okay. We can edit all that out, Chris, uh, you know, in post-production. <laughs> but don't forget to put back in Biden crapping in his pants. Uh, but in any event, yeah, so that, it, it's kind of bad that you can't even do the gig when uh, because, you know. Yeah, and this, that, is the, this is the second gig. This is the second gig he lost. He also lost a gig in Madison, Wisconsin at the uh, Comedy on State, which is which another. These are, is, it, is that a... Uh, is that a superficial well, reason that they're giving safety concerns? No, I could see the I could see the I could see the protests in Madison because it's I mean it's right there it's 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 right you know the campus is right there, yeah. so it's you know it's uh, uh, the comedy on state is right the the club there is right in the middle of uh, the co the college drinking area, so which I could, I've been to because I had a kid who went to Wisconsin. Sure. Yeah, so, so good. it's uh, uh, I could see I could see that uh, causing causing trouble, but I don't I. But Batavia seems like it's like I said, it's a it's a bank vault. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I, I'm wondering if there's some uh, something ideological behind uh, banning uh, Rappaport there. Meantime, there was um, there were these uh, in Philadelphia. So there was a clash between, you know, because it's uh, Pride Month. So I guess there was a, was there a right pride, pride parade going here? But then they ran up against it's like, you know, worse than the Jets and the Sharks. And they didn't resolve it by dancing their their heinies off, you know, like they would in West Side Story. <laughs> well, I don't think it was much more severe than that. But it's then the um, it's it's then the Palestinian sympathizers. And apparently, uh, if you're not a Palestinian sympathizer, I think this is the rule, you know, like three of a kind beats two pair. Uh, if if you're not a Palestinian sympathizer, you might be ushered out of the gay movement as well. Am I right about that? And anyway, it, would, it would seem it would seem that there's yeah. a Venn, uh, a strange Venn diagram being drawn there between the uh, yeah pro Palestinian and Pride. Yeah, it, uh, uh, the joke is Pride Parade in uh, 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 Palestine starts at the top of a building. I'm the, sorry, I missed that joke. Did I say did I say it right? The Pride Parade in Palestine starts at the top of a building and ends on the ground. Okay, all right. <laughs> Is this one of those where Tim's going to have to explain the joke <laughs> against the old man? I, I, I'm, wondering, <laughs> I'm wondering if I'm telling it wrong. <laughs> no, I think you're telling it right, and I think I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, what does he have last week, too? Chris is going to have so much editing to do in post production. <laughs> okay. But this is some so, kind of uh this is kind of a, a so that's, of homophobic joke. Am I right? Which I my my No, it's no, it's no, it's the, 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 that you're that you're really not allowed to to express pride in Palestine. Uh, ah, I see. And if I you see. do, it's uh they take you to the top of the building right. and I see. Yeah, all right. Now I'm getting it. And give um, you the quick elevator. Ha have you seen I'm at Twitter. I keep seeing these 
a, a, a lot of times they'll they'll uh, show some old Norm Macdonald clips, like you know him ripping on OJ when he was the host of Weekend Update on Saturday Night Live, but they show him with Dennis Miller, and I've seen this a few times where he's talking about how ridiculous the Pride Parade is, and. I mean, it's interesting how fast the culture has changed because, I mean, Norm MacDonald hasn't been dead that long. And there's no comedian right. who, could, who could say those kinds of things. I mean, you know, nope. he's just he's just absolutely ridiculing the pride parade. And that, that's verboten. I mean, I don't, I don't even think you see. You see any social conservatives doing that. Uh, it's like, OK, you know, the Obergefell case. Yeah, heck no, one. Fox News. Fox News puts up a rainbow for the month of June, I believe. So. Right. <laughs> right. Now, did you see that um, That uh, we there's... Here's another clash, be, you know, between African-Americans and gays, I think, because did you see that they... Juneteenth is like, I forgot which day is like that, the 17th of June. 16th. Yeah, okay. you're, you're a day later on everything. Uh, a day uh, later everything on everything today. in June. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, hey, I was born on the 3rd of July. Anyway, uh, <laughs> no. So. But um, they, they're there's a they, they got a little envious, I guess, and they decided that Juneteenth should be the entire month. They announced that. So I guess now we have to start referring to June 1th, June 2th, June 3rd. Uh, well, we've already got a month for history. What are we going to do in June? Well, I mean, it's not the big, it's the smallest month. Okay. What? Oh, February. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So mercifully. Yeah. All right. Quickly. Dr. Fauci basically pulled an Emily Latella. Never mind. I made up <laughs> social distancing. I, uh, I just kind of made that up. Yeah. The lab leak theory is probably valid. Yeah, masks, I mean, and masks do nothing. Yep, yep masks there's... do absolutely nothing. The school should have been open. I was bought off by the teachers' union. I, I, I was mean, not the. I was not the science. I was the speculation. I mean, <laughs> it's. Uh, I am yeah, actually nominating. Just... I am nominating uh, uh, Mr. Fauci. I'll, I'll follow uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene's lead on that one. I am nominating Mr. Fauci as our uh, gifts work of the week. Ah, gifts. I didn't realize he's a small guy. Is, uh, I, I, is he? And a gift swerg again is uh, it's a poison dwarf. A poison dwarf. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if he's. I don't know if he's that small. He's a. He's definitely. Yeah. He's, a, he's always the the most diminutive person when whenever he's in a picture. He says he's five seven. I'm not sure, but sure. Uh, he's maybe he's yeah. a big poison dwarf. But he's still a. He's still a, going to be. Yeah. The and and all these guys that we mentioned, they all have these Napoleon complexes, uh, and they really kind of wreck it for a lot of us <laughs> i mean robert de niro you know just spoke outside a courthouse and tried to influence the jury i guess and and was successful but um gee you know ram emmanuel shuffled off to japan and why did he do that again because he wanted to feel tall yeah yeah right so you know now you got uh fauci i mean basically throwing himself on the mercy of the court <laughs> and that's, that's that's what it seems like, doesn't it? But uh well, well, yeah. I think he's worried about the uh, the new Department of Justice is that he actually might be uh, might be prosecuted for lying in front of Congress this time. So he he's got to got to tell the truth now. Uh just amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, meanwhile, we've got you know, uh, I saw Jonah Goldberg you know, being uh, repulsed by the Jesusification of Trump after the uh, the verdict. And I, I'm not saying Trump is Jesus, but you know, he's our George Floyd or, you know, Matthew <laughs> Shepard, for that matter, matter who the gay guy who wasn't he wasn't sure. killed because he was gay. He was killed because he was in a drug. Well, well, that's what Marjorie Taylor Greene actually said uh, as she was leaving. She said, uh, I don't worship Trump. But let me tell you, you guys worship a felon. You all worship George Floyd. There we go. Bruce Wolf, <laughs> Tim Slagle on the Weekly Wrap. They tell me that they don't believe the motive here was robbery. In fact, they weren't robbed for anything. What they did tell me is as these kids were attacking them, they uh, yelled out that they own the streets. The family, they don't want to be identified, but they do want people to be warned that these team gatherings can turn violent really quickly. 
Please, we're just trying to go home to our kids. Leave us alone. Useful Tim Slagle on a weekly rant. Well, possession is nine tenths of the law. I guess they do own the streets, Tim. Well, it's uh, obviously Trump supporters that. Uh, that well, you know, I was thinking because you know I'm not familiar with Chicago neighborhood crime stats, but the only two Streeterville incidents that I'm aware of are this one, and when Jesse Smollett was attacked exactly. by two MAGA guys. Exactly. So it's a black and a white crime problem, as far as I can tell. Uh, in in Streeterville, well, no, it's obviously MAGA country. That's, yeah, uh, with yeah. They, you know, MAGA owns the street owns Streeterville. <laughs> All right. Now, I wonder if this is going to get the same attention that uh, that uh, uh, Jussie well, Smollett did. You know, I, it, it got some attention. It's not going to get you know the Jussie uh, attention. And, and again, mark my words on appeal. I think there's, there's still banging around the court system, if I'm not mistaken. He's going to be exonerated. You know that that everybody is entitled to, and you you should have as much charity as anyone else, Tim Foyle, because <laughs> uh, everybody's entitled to at least one conspiracy theory. And mine is, that, of course, and I've maintained this all along, is that he was railroaded um, simply because he got caught in a, a gay affair and he had to... Uh, or, the, or one of the brothers had to had to was got caught in this, and he had to prove his manhood. So they they, they rigged this whole thing. I, they, yeah, a lot of it doesn't add up. But you know, how many conspiracy theories do? Um, so, I, I'm having a hard time putting those pieces together. So so you believe I'm, that I'm trying the, to remember this? I'm, that it wasn't wait, wait, I don't up. remember my conspiracy theory. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But <laughs> two Nigerians on the grassy knoll. Yeah, no, <laughs> they, no, he was set up. He was set up by the two Nigerians because one of them was caught having uh, a, a gay affair and he had to prove his manhood, which, you know, that's a big deal in Nigeria. Sure. So they did this to Jussie, but Jussie wasn't part of it. So he was, he was a victim here. He thought it and was, I'm he, thought stick it was with that. he thought it was for real. That's that's okay. I think that's the just to the conspiracy theory. <laughs> I'm not okay. sure. Right. <laughs> but and they and you know, they knew you know, they, we find they, out lots of things. Look, we just found out just the other day that you didn't have to mask, okay? And that the six social distancing didn't matter. So you know. Well, we find some of us, some later. of us, some of us might have found that out. Uh, yeah, I, uh, look, just and the I was, other day, <laughs> I was with you on that one all along. No question about it. So, yeah, but uh, you know, and then here's the thing. You know, you see these things that you know happens like in Streeterville. How widespread is this? Uh, you know, how widespread? Well, is... I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, it's the age-old question. I mean, how bad is? crime in Chicago. Now, I know that because the, the city is in such financial straits that they can't even send a cop <laughs> on a 911 call on a lot a lot of the neighborhoods now. Oh, but go go, you know, go yeah, to file, arbitration file, on this. Come in, come into the show station Monday and file a report. Yeah, well, yes. did you <laughs> see the one? I forgot what city it is. I just read about this today. They're not even going to send police. They're going to send social workers, unarmed social workers out on some 911 calls. You know, not where there's been gunplay, I imagine. But on some of them, let's well, see. Have you I'm ever not. tried to get a, if you're trying to get a social worker between 5 p.m. Friday and 9 a.m. on Monday? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's gonna a tough be, one. It's, it's going to be. Uh, but yeah, it's, Chicago's. There's going to be a lapse. Yeah. And plus, now you know. I mean, if you want to, I don't want to give a tip for all you young criminals out there, but during the convention, when we're going to, they, Chicago has got to put on a good show. Boy, if you want to pull off some kind of heist at 63rd and Stony Island, uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't hear it from me. You didn't hear it from me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it, it's kind of difficult to get a, to get a cop. But how widespread is this in, you know, there was just, a, I believe a Chicago magazine article by Carol Felsenthal, and she's as much a liberal and part of the, you know, the, the old guard establishment as anyone else. And I think it was just how bad Michigan Avenue is now. And, you know, because I know that, you know, conservative 
wing nuts like me are are going to look at a picture uh, of Michigan Avenue on a Sunday morning and say it's empty and say that this represents everything, you know, the rest of the week. You know, that that's the kind of thing we'll do. But when Carol Felsenthal writes an article that isn't uh, favorable to Michigan Avenue, our crown jewel, uh, you know, what, what, what did you what did she say, she say about it? To just that it's dangerous or just that well, it's I mean, all you know, boarded up? Been, you know, there's a lot of lot of lot of boarding up right now. And, you know, they're not mm -hmm. boarding up with, you know, the, you know, you'd think they'd have like somebody who had done the displays for Christmas for Marshall Fields <laughs> all those years, the window displays, hire them to do some fancy board up job. But and they're just tacking up plywood practically. You know, that's actually that's actually not a bad idea. There is yeah. probably a warehouse full of right. uh of ornaments and, yeah. and statues and robots from christmas from in the, july the yeah century yeah how about would... you know you take empty frango mint boxes and you and you line them with lattice like you know on neiman marcus and i know they don't have to do with the frango mints but we're all in this together and yeah. uh yeah. and actually you know since we're since we're so busy renaming streets we could call it potemkin avenue <laughs> that's right <laughs> what was Potemkin one of the black slaves? No, no, no. Oh, that's Dusable, right? Yeah, Potemkin. I, I remember him. Uh, that was a that was a Gogol novel, wasn't it? Uh, Potemkin Village, I think. So, um, all right, let's let's turn our attention to the Hunter Biden trial. And thank goodness, I mean, the Hunter Biden trial is so much easier to understand than the Trump trial was, because I mean, you know, I'm a lawyer, you know, and, and admittedly, you know, personal injury is the area that uh, I deal in, and I'm not an expert on all these constitutional issues and on uh, the Federal Election Commission's uh, Act. And apparently neither is anybody else, including the Manhattan district attorney. But that didn't stop him from from getting Donald Trump on 34 counts. Um, but Hunter, you know, it's you, you for, 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 for those of you who probably haven't read the actual indictments. I, I, I want to point out that each one of those uh, indictments, those felony indictments was a payment. Right. No, we know. That. Yeah, I know that. Right. That's how I think you a lot of I think a lot of people don't know that. It's like, really? He did. He no, did. I mean, he a, paid off standard, 34 strippers. No, it's first thing. You know, the first thing you learn in law school. Is is, is just uh, exaggerate. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, if you're arguing before the jury and you're the plaintiff's attorney, I think, you know, this Fred Lane taught this to me many, many years ago. You got to make a mountain out of a molehill. And if you're the defense attorney, you make a molehill out of a mountain. That's what you do. So that's what Alvin Bragg did. And, you know, and there are people who fell for that like this. I love when sports guys think that they know about politics, you know, except for me, of course, which I, I do know. But there's this guy, Colin Cowherd, who makes millions of dollars a year. And he's saying. Thirty four counts. And he was comparing it to like baseball statistics or something like that. No, no, you idiot. It was one count and, and dummies like you multiplied it times 34. It was, but, uh, but yeah, it was broken case. down. It was broken down to the, to the, to the layaway plan. It was 34, oh, oh. 34 monthly payments. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, I mean, for, for something that isn't illegal, but other than that. So, but the Hunter case is pretty open and shut. It's just, it's just, he, he was doing drugs. He lied on the form. We're all in favor of all the uh, the gun laws. Right. <laughs> Mr. President. Got to go to you got to go to jail for that. Now, I'm hearing the, the two things. The, the two outs that he has is one. They're hoping for jury nullification, which which could happen. I mean, you get Johnny Cochran in there uh, and it will sway the Delaware jury. Or they're just hoping for. Uh, for the Supreme Court of the United States, the one that John, Donald Trump put in there, Clarence Thomas, who had this decision in the Bruin case, which, you know, really protected Second Amendment rights, that they'll rely on that, that you can't you can't uh, dispossess somebody or, or uh, say that he, he can't own a, a firearm merely because. He's a coke addict or whatever was using drugs. Well, it's actually the defense I've seen so far. It's kind of the Clinton defense. It depends on what your definition of is is. Uh -huh. 
It's uh, are you uh, a drug addict? It's like, well, no, not for the past 15 minutes. Yeah. That day <laughs> I didn't do drugs. That doesn't, it's probably not going to work because he, he's on his laptop. By the way, the laptop, it was yeah. real according uh, to the government. Yeah. It actually, it was not, not Russian disinformation. Another, another conspiracy, another conspiracy yeah. come true. But anyway, Mia Farrow. You know, well, and, now I want to talk more about this gun thing because it's I think oh, it's okay, curious. I think it's yeah. I think it's curious that they that they're now they're saying Trump isn't allowed to to, to have a gun. So it's, it's oh, like because he's a felon. <laughs> right. 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 They want to so take in other his, words, he now he can't even do the hypothetical. He can't shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue because <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on deprive my client. <laughs> <laughs> because because he's merely a convicted felon 34 times over. So um, here's the other interesting thing is yeah. I po in, in December of, uh, of last year, I posted a picture of a hunter smoking crack and uh, his, him, him holding a gun. And you saw a little of Hunter's chest and you saw a little of Hunter's leg uh, holding the gun. And I, I, I don't even know what comment I made on Facebook, something about, uh, gee, I wonder if he's guilty. And, and uh <laughs> Facebook just informed me that my picture's been removed. Oh, and because apparently I I shared a personal intimate photo. <laughs> well, there you go. Hey. That uh, that that promotes sexual violence. So it's uh, huh? Facebook. Facebook's getting ready for the election. It would appear. There. I guess. Uh, I guess so. I guess so. Oh, okay. kudos to you on that one. Uh, real quick, real quickly here. Um. So Mia Farrow tweeted a defense of hunter and uh, you know you got to be wa watch out for mia farrow because she got that nebbish woody allen in the, a lot of trouble and uh, the best defense woody allen had i thought was she's an actress she's a great actress <laughs> of course you believe that idiot story <laughs> i've been with soon Yi for 45 years now okay so you know i'm not exactly some crazy guy all right but she says supposing i was in my 50s and had a drug drug problem in and out of rehab and say I bought a gun, but on the form, I didn't mention the drug issue. Maybe I genuinely believed I was done with drugs or maybe I was thinking of killing myself and I never worked for the government. Even if my dad did, would I, I be called into a congressional hearing? I mean, I mean, oh, gee whiz. And, uh, uh, just and Hunter said and Hunter's leading said, uh, Hunter said, uh, well, you know, I might have done drugs, but I never got knocked up by Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the <laughs> Weekly Rant. And Clark. I mean, that's clear and all which was called. The question is, will they call it unnecessary? Kennedy Carter. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle right. on the Weekly Rap. I got a confession. I have to make Tim. I actually saw this play live on Saturday. Wow. We, we had played golf, you know, at the club and we got rained out on the 17th hole. So we repaired to the grill and we're sitting there probably, you know, one of the, the only people in the grill because it was pouring outside and there's a bunch of big screen TVs in there. And one's got the uh, U S women's golf open on it. And then a couple of others have this basketball game and, you know, it's bad enough that I so have I'm to guessing this wasn't the men's grill, right? Uh, well, I was just going to say it's bad enough that I have to play from the white tees <laughs> in my dotage. But do I have to have my pants around my ankles as well? Mosey on up to the red tees where I dribbled my ball uh, and watch this stuff. And you know, I got to tell you, the guys that I'm with, they like they like this women's basketball. Huh? I mean, if somebody had told never in my wildest nightmares about being a local yokel sportscaster, did I envision talking about women's basketball when the Sox and Cubs were playing each other in games that count? I mean, I just <laughs> it just drove me crazy. But anyway, no, that's the that's the way the world. I could understand women's oh, and, volleyball. And, I could definitely understand guys being into that. Totally. But, uh, I, I don't totally. get the I don't get the basketball fascination. Oh no, I actually I have to admit. You know, they, they, they're better than I am at that. <laughs> A lot better. No, they're pretty darn good. Um, uh -huh. But uh, I saw the play, and 
to our credit, I mean, we saw it and said, oh, that's a cheap shot. And then we, you know, ate our meal and didn't talk about it on sports talk for the next five days, which is, you know, what happened. And it became like this cause celeb. I mean, Bob Costas weighed in on this. And so, you know, it's a it's a big matter. Bob Costas said, you know, if this had been between two black women, nobody would be saying anything about it. Oh, OK, Bob, you know, yeah, been, what if it what been, if it was what if it was the other way? <laughs> do, you, do you think it would be do you think it would be newsworthy then oh, if it was caitlin if caitlin you know, bob, had done that to kennedy bob is all oh her name's kennedy i thought it was chennedy no i i, I know it's kennedy <laughs> so uh inbound on the chennedy chennedy so, sounds like a very irish pronunciation of kennedy yeah here's after the thing. about, about yeah. eight o'clock in the evening yeah <laughs> my wild irish roll so bob costas you know, has to be on the side of the angels. And, you know, if you have to think it through, Bob, conservatives have been talking about black on black crime all, all along. You're the ones always talking about it when it's, you know, a white cop. Uh, cop uh, that's a good point. Know, who, who does that. So, yeah, you know, but he had to say that. Um, you know, I thought it was uh, uh, I thought it was despicable what, what happened, but I think what was even worse is when uh, Caitlin's own teammates started high fiving her for that. That that seemed out of line. Oh, then they, they tried to apologize, and they <laughs> apologized, of course, a day late and a dollar short, or one thousand dollars short, because that's all she the fine was. But the uh, they then then they she didn't she wasn't remorseful at all. Really? So they haven't really apologized. Now they're claiming that they were harassed by somebody asking them a question. Only there's video of it and it's not. They weren't really harassed. I uh, think you know, Bob uh, is, you know, I think what's going to happen here is, is, is we're going to realize why women's sports is never really uh, is never really taken off. Because, uh, uh, you know, back when Michael Jordan uh, was, uh, was, you know, uh, uh, ruling the Bulls, people were proud to be on Michael Jordan's team. Uh, this is, right. this is essentially, she's essentially, she's essentially the, the, the Michael Jordan of women's basketball right. uh, and, uh, women are different than men. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, so people say, people say if women ruled the world, there wouldn't be any wars. Uh, a friend of mine, she said, no, women would go to war over another woman wearing the wrong shoes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, I'm going to recuse myself from this conversation. This is the thing. That, this is good thing. advice. Got thrown off Facebook. I'm going to get thrown off the podcasting universe. So, uh, um, somebody, I thought it was really funny. I saw a tweet that Caitlin Clark is the Jackie Robinson of the WNBA. <laughs> it's just, I mean, oh my god, oh jeez, that's uh, that was. But Bob, Bob Costas, well, that would be true if there was actually a Caucasian basketball. Uh, association which uh which i've advocated for a long time because uh <laughs> yeah, i mean if we if if, if no, we're putting but I women love, you know, segregated baseball, yeah speaking i mean baseball is just this last week was trying to integrate the negro league records into the major league baseball archives so there you see the coming together and just at that moment we get the counter revolution from something called the chicago sky so i love that and bob costas didn't you have anything better to do, like donate a liver to Mickey Mantle or something? I really and th I don't know if we have pictures, but is Angel Reese of, of the Chicago Sky got in trouble because she's trying to say, hey, we're we're the ones who put this league together. You know, um, we got celebrities coming to games, sold out arena. The reason why we're watching women's basketball, not it's not just because of one person. It's because of me, too. I want you all to realize that. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, you know what, Angel? I really like Tim. Do you notice her fake eyelashes there? So I, I like a tough girl, you know, and, and nobody's as tough as uh, any tougher than Angel Reese. But I think she's got some really nice eyelashes going on there. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a big fan of the fake eyelashes. I've been I've been I've been into fake eyelashes since Barbara Felton. Oh, and Emma oh, Peel. You, uh, you wrecked it for me. <laughs> oh, ancient 99. Oh, I didn't realize that she was wearing fake eye eyelashes. Um, uh oh. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm just waiting for Harrison Butker to weigh in on the whole thing. And then I, I'll reserve judgment until he, he speaks on the issue. Uh, and, uh, you know, that, that's all I got to say about 
about this whole thing. And also, I was I'm just wondering if this Kennedy or Kennedy, um, the late Dan Roan, uh, look Barbara Feldman, yeah, yeah. Remember when she was on that? Not that I remember. You know, but she was she did this commercial for some kind of cologne, I guess, or where she was on a uh, a bearskin rug or a tiger skin. Do you remember that? I I do not remember that. It's uh, yeah. my parents probably shut off the TV when that commercial would come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. I let's edit that one out too. <laughs> uh, that that kind of memory. Speaking Got of it. the speaking of the yeah. uh, uh, the 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 uh, can we say can we say what league the Black League was? Can we actually? Can, that I was, just said it before. I said the Negro League. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I didn't know I'm, that I wasn't still, supposed to say I'm, that. I'm still yeah. uncomfortable saying that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're allowed to say it when you mention the league. Uh, but that, that's about it. <laughs> okay. Um, um, but w yeah. w the most interesting thing about the, those stats being included is that it actually knocked Ty Cobb off the. Oh, sure. Uh, uh, which, which is kind of karmic justice if you know anything about Ty Cobb. Well, he wasn't he racist. <laughs> big time <laughs> who wasn't but he was really racist <laughs> yeah the, when he attacked that handicapped person in the stands that was not a, a black person though was it it was it was just a handicapped person <laughs> okay and i think he'd been taunted by the handicapped person as well so it wasn't like he he wasn't <laughs> out of justification um so yeah i uh yeah that's 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 pretty bad that that happened uh, but uh, we're we're past that. Meantime, just very quickly, I'll end, end with this. Are you aware of this Caleb Williams phenomenon? He's the Bears' number one draft pick. He hasn't thrown a pass yet in the National Football League and won't for a few months. He's been partying all the, over the place in Chicago, was in Wrigleyville the other night. Cheer, the fans love him and everything like that. I mean, he hasn't thrown one pass in the National Football League yet. And everybody is going crazy, and the expectations are unbelievable. I'm pretty sure that even one of the Magi or Magi uh, said, <laughs> shouldn't we hold off on the frankincense until we see him at least tread water? Tread water. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we wish you the best, Caleb Williams, but how about throwing one pass? Well, well, actually, in, in his defense, uh, throwing the passes have gotten a lot of NF players in trouble. So. Yes, they have. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the <laughs> Weekly Wrap. And that's the Weekly Wrap on radio and television. Follow Bruce at Bruce Wolf Shy on Twitter and Tim at TimSlagle.com. The Weekly Wrap with Bruce Wolf, a CP Pods production.